Mike's Pick'em's Challenge has found its way to YouTube. What's up, everyone? Welcome into the War Zone Sports Network. I appreciate you guys tuning in to this Pick'em's video. I'm going to try and do this once a week for the rest of the season. So make sure you're subscribed with notifications on so you can see all the picks all season long. As I've been doing on TikTok, I've been encouraging everyone to compete along with me in the comment section. So drop your picks down in the comment section below. Where do you agree with me? Where do you disagree with me? And let's compete! Let's compete to see who can win uh, the Mike's Pick'em Challenge. The last three weeks has been extremely tough on me. I had three straight weeks where I lost like three total games if you combine them all. But then the last three weeks, I've had back to back to back weeks right around 500. So we're going to try and do better for week 11. Our overall record right now is 96 and 53 with a record of 7 and 7 last week. So, But we're going to get it together this week. I got a great feeling about week 11's picks. Starting off with Thursday Night Football. We got the New England Patriots heading to Atlanta to face the Atlanta Falcons. And if you've been following along with any of my content, I'm not necessarily like believing in the Falcons a ton. I don't think they make the playoffs, but I have been preaching that I do think the Falcons are a little bit better than most of the bad teams in the NFL. And that for their record right around 500, they might be one of the better teams in that tier. The Patriots have been red hot as of late and they're putting it all together and this team's looking like they may be a force in the AFC for years to come. Now they do need to add some more talent to this roster, some more weapons on offense especially, but I think that this Falcons game shouldn't be too much of a challenge for them. I'm going to go 27 to 13 Patriots in this game. Next we got the Indianapolis Colts heading to Buffalo to play the Buffalo Bills. And while the Colts are still a tough team and there's been bigger upsets in the NFL so far this year, I think the Bills keep it hot after that big win last week. When I say big win, I mean absolute demolition of the New York Jets. And I'm going to say that the Bills take this one 35 to 21. We got the Ravens playing in Chicago against the Chicago Bears. This could be a trap game. I'm going to take the Ravens to win, but Justin Fields is definitely going to move the ball a lot better than that Miami Dolphins def offense, defense, offense, than that Miami offense did against the Baltimore Ravens on Thursday night last week. So Lamar Jackson better bring his A game. The Bears do have a tough defense. I think this game stays tight and the Ravens squeak out another close one and win 24 to 21. Then we got the Detroit Lions traveling to Cleveland to play the Cleveland Browns. And I've been telling Browns fans for like the last month, there are problems in Cleveland. And they go a lot further than OBJ. After that big victory, uh, the, the week after losing OBJ, I saw the Browns fans getting hyped saying, without OBJ, we're a Super Bowl contender. You're not. There are some big problems with this team. They got to solve those problems. There's too much talent on this roster for them not to be competing for Super Bowls in this little window that they have with all these guys. I do think the Browns win this game, and I do think they have kind of a little bit of a get-right game. I think they win 38 to 14 over the Detroit Lions. The Tennessee Titans are an absolute terror. Now they get to host at home a Houston Texans team that really is just trying to get to the end of this season so they can continue to try and rebuild this team. And when I say continue, I don't even know if the Texans are necessarily rebuilding their team. And I say that because they've been in a rebuild for a long time. There was a little short stint there where they were good and they were going to the playoffs year after year after year. But for the most part, the Texans tend to stay mediocre. So we'll see what direction they go in. They signed a bunch of veterans last offseason, and I was like, okay, so they're throwing in the towel on this season before it even starts. And they don't really have much young talent on this team that's not their quarterback who has a bunch of legal trouble who's about to get traded away. I'm going to say the Titans take this one, and I'm going to say it's in a blowout fashion. We'll go with 35 to 7 Titans. Green Bay going into Minnesota to play this Minnesota Vikings team who just came off a big win in L.A. against my Chargers. Still in pain about it. Oh, boo -hoo. Let me play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. The Vikings brought a good game plan to the field and they executed. So what can I do? All I can do is applaud Justin Jefferson, how he just absolutely took over that game. But this is a much tougher task. I think that Green Bay is the best team in football when they're healthy. And I'm going to stick with that take and I'm going to go with Green Bay beating the Minnesota Vikings 31-21. to 21. Green Bay.
We got the Miami Dolphins heading to New York to play the New York Jets. I've been betting against the Dolphins every game this season, and for the most part, it's been working out. So I'm going to do it again. I don't think the Dolphins are consistent enough to really put multiple wins together in a row, although the Jets aren't consistent by any means necessary. And I think that this pick comes more from my lowness on the Dolphins than me being high on the Jets per se, and I'm just going to take the home team to win. I'm going to say it's a close game. We'll go with no defense, and it's 31-28 Jets. The Eagles are hosting the New Orleans Saints, and I think the New Orleans Saints collapse started the second that they lost Jameis Winston. This team was a team that was slightly above average and was probably going to make a wild card if Jameis Winston doesn't get hurt. Trevor Simeon isn't playing awful, but I don't think he does enough to elevate the offense to the next level. So that way they can put up, you know, 28, 30, 35 points in games, which you need to do in the NFL to win right now. Now the New Orleans Saints defense is really good, so I still think they keep it tight. And I think it's a very, very low scoring game. I'm gonna go with 17, 14 Eagles. Washington, Ron Rivera taking on his old quarterback, Cam Newton in Carolina. It's gonna be Cam Newton's first start. And while I don't think Cam Newton is going to ever be what he once was back in the day, back in 2015 when he won MVP and took this team to a Super Bowl, I do think he affords something that they really need right now. And that's a little bit more turnover-free football. And Christian McCaffrey coming back is going to help out a ton as well. This defense is still playing lights out like it was when this team was 3-0. It's just the offense keeps turning the ball over, putting them in bad spots, and it's hard to win games like that. I think Cam Newton runs the ball a lot more than Sam Darnold does. I think he protects the ball a lot better than Sam Darnold would have. And I think they win this game. And I'm going to go with Carolina 23, Washington 21. Tyler Henneke does put a late push in the game, in my opinion. But Carolina holds them off to get the W. San Fran heading to Jacksonville to play Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> Being a 49ers fan is probably like riding a roller coaster right there. They look great one week. They look like that team that went to the Super Bowl one week, like last week against the Los Angeles Rams. And then the next week, they lose a game to a team that they shouldn't even be in their league. And the injuries have something to do with it, but this team is very inconsistent. I do think the 49ers win this game. I think they win it pretty comfortably. I'm going to go with 28 to 10 49ers. We got the Bengals going to Las Vegas to see the Las Vegas Raiders. And Raiders fans, where are you at? I got all this smack talk from Raiders fans about how this team is a playoff team. Lock it in. This is not like previous years. They're not going to fall apart. They're not going to have a complete collapse like they have in previous years. And they've started to collapse. And now you can go ahead and take a shot at my Chargers as well. That's fair. I'll give you that fair point. And people who did take shot at the Chargers in the past, I'd say, yeah, I mean, the team's playing way better than I expect them to play already as it is. So maybe they are going to start to fall apart a little bit. I'm already happy with how the season's gone, especially after that Ravens loss. All the Raiders fans wanted to pile on me. And I said, the Ravens are a good team. What do I expect the team to do? I didn't expect this young team with a first-year head coach and a second-year quarterback to beat the Chiefs, Browns, Ravens three straight weeks in a row. And they played the Cowboys in that stretch as well. So I was just being real. And I was like, eh. I mean, I kind of expected us to lose that game. Raiders fans don't have any sense of reality. And I guess that's just a part of being a diehard fan of your team, right? A little bit of delusional. And sure enough, if you lose your head coach, you lose your number one receiver, and now it's the Raiders look like one of the worst teams in football against the Chiefs this last weekend. I think the Bengals win this game, and I think the Bengals win this game comfortably. I'm going to go with a score prediction of 35 to 17 Bengals. Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow just had a bye week. They're rested, and they're ready to attack this Raiders defense that really struggled against Mahomes. We've got Arizona heading into Seattle to play the Seattle Seahawks, and this is kind of my upset of the week. Yes, I still think the Arizona Cardinals are way better than the Seattle Seahawks, but I think with Kyler Murray banged up, missing a couple weeks, even if he comes back, it's going to take him a little bit to get into a groove. We saw Russell Wilson really struggle against Green Bay this last weekend in his first game back, and then DeAndre Hopkins' health is up in the air, and even if he comes back, similar story. And I think now two weeks of full practice, I think Russell Wilson gets this offense clicking. We see a little bit of a shootout, and I see the Seahawks winning this game 31-28 against the Arizona Cardinals. It's tough to go into Seattle and win still, even with this team uh, being a lot less talented than the Arizona team. Pittsburgh Steelers, well, half of the Pittsburgh Steelers are coming to L.A. to play my Chargers, and I swear if the Chargers don't win this game, I'm throwing in the towel for real on this season. But anyways, like I was saying, the Chargers already met my expectations 
from the beginning of the season. All I wanted to see out of this season was a growth year. I think our Super Bowl window is 2022 to 2025, the rest of Herbert's rookie contract, basically. All I wanted to see was, one, they needed to fix the O-line and the additions needed to work out. Corey Lindsley has completely changed this O-line. I think the Chargers are definitely a top 15, top 12, and they're, they're about to be a top 10 defense with one more addition to the right side of the line. Rashawn Slater has been a revelation. That dude's a beast. We just needed another tackle on the other side. My other expectation was this team competes with the Chiefs. I wasn't asking for even victories over the Chiefs. We've already beaten them once this year. I just wanted to see some really good games where we looked really competitive against a team that we've struggled to beat for the past 10 years just about. I mean, there was a streak there where I think the Chiefs beat the Chargers 11 games in a row or nine games in a row. So check. That's two checks in two boxes right there for my goal set for this season. And then it kind of goes hand in hand. I wanted Brandon Stilly to just get a few big wins. When I say big wins, wins on prime time. Wins in high pressure scenarios, and we've already kind of put that together. And for both Staley and Herbert, those are checked in the box. So I'm already really stoked about the Charger season regardless. I also had them winning 11 games, so I kind of want to see them go and play in a playoff game. I think that'd be great experience for Herbert and the entire team. I mean, other than Keenan Allen, Mike Williams is probably playing one playoff game or two playoff games. Lindsley, obviously the veterans, Bosa. Like this team's really young and none of these guys have any playoff experience. So for guys like Asante Samuel Jr., for guys like Justin Herbert, for guys like Josh Palmer outside, for some of the younger guys in the O-line like Rashawn Slater, Nuchenna Nuosu, uh, Jerry Tillery, Justin Jones, Kenneth Murray, all these guys have never seen playoff football before. I just want to get that experience. I want to get them in that high pressure scenario and really feel what that feels like. So that way, when we need to win those playoff games and we feel like we are Super Bowl contenders, these guys have the experience that they know what that feeling feels like before they head in. And I think the Chargers are on pace too actually make the playoffs this year and that's enough Chargers talk. I'm gonna take the Chargers to win this game. 31 on that depleted Pittsburgh defense 2-14. Hopefully we can slow down Najee. That's going to be the key to the game for us. Hey, this is post-edit mic and you can see the difference in the camera quality from the new camera to the old camera. It's quite a difference. Anyways, I just realized while I was editing that I forgot to talk about the Cowboys-Chiefs game. The game of the week. So I'm going to give my prediction real quick. While I think the Chiefs are starting to find their groove and that win against the Raiders, the Raiders was huge for them in the long run. Guys, we may not want to accept it as NFL fans that aren't Dallas Cowboys fans, but this team is one of the more well-rounded teams in football right now. The defense is playing at a way higher level than they were last year, close to top 10, and the offense is one of the best offenses in football still. I don't think the Chiefs are as complete as the Cowboys, so I'm going to take the Cowboys to win this game in a shootout. 41-34, Cowboys take it and shock the Chiefs in Arrowhead. All right. Back to the high quality stuff. And then we got the New York Giants heading to Tampa to play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers win this game with pretty much ease, but Danny Dimes and this Giants team has hung in basically every single game they've played this season. So I'm going to actually go ahead and say that they hang in there until the fourth quarter and then the Tampa Bay Buccaneers take off and they win this game 34 to 24. And that's it for this week's NFL Pick'em. That's all my picks and some score predictions. I appreciate you guys for tuning into this one. Let me know what you think of the new camera. Let me know your picks in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe with notifications on so you can see next week's because next week's we're going to review week 11 and then pick for week 12. I'm Mike and I'm on the mic. Bolt up. And this is me saying until next time. Bam. Sucker. I gave you fair warning, beware. Smack him in the middle. Smack him in the middle. Smack him in the middle.